Hello everybody! In this video I'm doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to discuss with you guys the differences between plain face rotors, drilled rotors, slotted rotors, slotted variations such as the J-hook, as well as hybrid variations between slotted and drilled, and how they each affect performance. But before we begin discussing the different types of brake discs, let me first give you a brief history lesson on how they came to be the superior technology equipped on most cars today. Back in 1902, Lanchester Motor Company was the first company to equip brake discs onto an automotive vehicle. But we wouldn't see the mass production of cars with brake discs until 1955 with the Citroen DS. Up until that point, most cars were equipped with drum brakes. However, the success of brake discs in World War II on fighter planes and tanks, as well as the success of brake discs in racing applications, forced automotive companies to look at brake discs as the superior braking mechanism in cars. When brake discs were first being mass produced, they were of a solid construction, meaning that the disc itself was completely solid cast iron all the way throughout. But as vehicles became heavier and faster, we needed some way to be able to cool the discs down under heavy braking. And that's when vented disc brakes came in handy. Um, the earliest mention of vented disc brakes that I can find was from a patent in about 1929. I'm not entirely sure when they became standard on most vehicles, but almost every vehicle today is equipped with at least vented brakes in the front. Sometimes you'll see them with solid disc brakes in the back or drum brakes like I have on the Sentra. But the vented disc brake design basically has these little veins that allows hot gas to take heat away from the disc, and then it gets vented out to the outside of the disc. This cools the disc down and allows it to perform better after heavy braking. Now, most discs today that are equipped on 99.9% .9 of cars are just gonna have a flat face disc like this, pretty plain with no patterns etched into it. The reason for this is that they're fairly cost effective. They're pretty cheap to make since you don't have to add any additional manufacturing steps to put in the different designs on the disc. They are also a lot longer lasting. The smooth disc design here means that you don't get as much pad wear, which means that the pads and the discs itself will last a lot longer. Because of the lack of designs here, they are also a lot quieter on the road. You don't get as much noise from these as you would on, say, drilled or slotted rotors. And that makes them great for road use. The cost effectiveness, the quietness, and how long these discs can last are kind of what everyday drivers are looking for in disc brakes. And that's why these are equipped on most vehicles. The only downside to plain rotors like this with no real patterns etched into them is the fact that they have no way to be able to vent gases that build up under heavy braking when you're, for instance, at the track. This really isn't mu as much of an issue today as it was back in the days of asbestos pads where you got a lot of gas buildup when the pads started to get really hot. Um, they're also not as effective at thermal regulation. The plain face here means you don't have as much surface area and ways to be able to regulate the temperature as you would with certain other brake disc designs, and this means that they're not as great for track use. You'll experience a lot more brake fade with this style of disc than you might with other certain types of discs that we're getting ready to show you. And then they are not as interesting as other types of discs that you would see. They're pretty boring because of the plain face versus, for instance, drilled or slotted discs that look a lot sportier and are a little more appealing for market purposes. So in order to address the concerns with performance on the track or appearance, there are some performance brake disc designs out there that we're gonna go over. So the first type of disc rotor that we're gonna talk about today are drilled rotors. With drilled rotors, you have a bunch of these holes that have been drilled through the face of the disc. And we first saw this in the 1950s as engineers were looking for a way to be able to ventilate the gases that build up due to the use of asbestos pads. When asbestos pads got really hot, they would generate a thin layer of gas that would sit between the rotor and the pad, which meant you got a lot of brake fade because the pads weren't able to make good contact with the disc. By drilling a bunch of holes in the rotor, you've given those gases a way to be able to escape into the ventilation veins in the disc. This meant that the disc could work more effectively at higher temperatures. The only issue with drilled rotors like this is you do have the issue of thermal instability. Because you've drilled a bunch of holes through the face of the rotor, you've ruined the integrity of the disc itself, which means at really high temperatures, you're at risk of cracking the rotor. Nowadays, ventilating gases through these holes isn't really as important because we use ceramic pads instead of asbestos pads, and the ceramic pads don't generate as much gas, which means we don't see the type of brake fade that we did with asbestos. The other downside of these is, of course, the cost. Because you're adding another manufacturing step to be able to drill holes through the rotor, it means that you're going to drive up the cost of the rotor. 
So why would anybody want to buy these sort of drilled rotors here if they're not really that important for track use anymore? It's mainly an appearance and marketing thing. Drilled rotors, of course, look really cool. If you're looking at them behind a set of really cool wheels or whatever, they look really nice, but they really just don't have any functional purpose anymore. So in order to be able to address the issues with performance nowadays, we need to look at some other options. A modification to the drilled rotor that helps address some of the issues with it is the dimpled rotor. A dimpled rotor looks a lot like a drilled rotor, but instead of drilling holes completely through the disc, you're only drilling them part of the way, which gives it the appearance of a drilled rotor while still maintaining the structural integrity of the disc and allowing you to be able to ventilate some of the brake dust and gases that build up between the pad and the disc. However, they're still not as effective as some of the other rotor designs that we're about to go over. So the next type of rotor that we're going to discuss are slotted rotors. With slotted rotors, you have the shallow trenches that are carved into the face of the disc. And what these trenches are able to do are clean the pad off by scraping away a microscopic layer off of the surface of the pad. Each time the pad passes over the leading edge of the slot, and what this does is cleans the pad off of any sort of brake dust or gases allowing them to escape. It also deglazes the pad, revealing a fresh surface each time, which means that the pad always has good contact with the rotor. All of this increases the coefficient of friction, giving the driver a better feel and giving the pad a better bite as it passes over that leading edge. With these slotted rotors, you do get even pad wear just based on the way that the slots are formed. Now, the downside to these rotors is the fact that you do have a high rate of pad wear. Because of the way that the slots end up shaving off a microscopic layer off of the pad each time it passes over each of the grooves, it does mean that you're going to lose your pad more quickly. You also still have the issue of thermal cracking. Because you form this narrower region inside the rotor, you've placed a weak spot on the rotor, which means you're still at risk of forming a crack, but it's not as high of a risk as you would have had with drilled rotors. Of course, slotted rotors are also gonna cost more than your typical blank rotors that you see on most cars. But still, if you're looking for a performance rotor, this is typically the option to go for versus going, let's say, with a drilled rotor. There are, of course, loads of variants to slotted rotors, and one of those would be the J-hook design, where instead of having straight trenches throughout the surface of the disc, we have these little trenches that form J's. This is a much more aggressive slot design that gives you a lot more pad bite, but that also means you've increased the rate of wear in your rotor, and these are, of course, a lot more expensive to make than your typical slotted rotors that have those straight trenches like we just saw. And then, of course, other variations to the slotted rotors are going to be, for instance, hybrids between slotted and drilled rotors, where you can get the best of both worlds, where you have the appearance of drilled rotors, but the functionality of slotted rotors. All right, guys, so let's discuss the big question. What is the best for braking performance? Each of the different designs we've discussed today have their own distinct advantages. Plain face rotors are really good for endurance. They give you the longest pad life for the cheapest to make. Drilled rotors have the advantage of appearance, really. They used to be really beneficial back in the days of asbestos pads, but are really only for appearance nowadays. Slotted rotors give you the scraping capability of being able to keep the pads fresh and clean while still being able to maintain even pad wear, but you can also go with a slotted variant such as the J-hook that gives you slightly less even pad wear but gives you a more aggressive bite and slightly better pedal feel. And then of course there are hybrids out there which kind of give you the best of both worlds. But the real answer to braking performance is none of these. In fact, if you want to maximize your braking performance, you're best going off with a nice set of pads and tires. While the rotors do play a minor role in mitigating the temperature and trying to prevent brake fade, the real determining factor in performance is going to be your tires and your pads. With your pads, the material that you choose is going to determine how long the pad lasts before it becomes completely worn out. And it also determines the temperatures that you can hit before you start to experience brake fade. But the tires are probably the most important aspect of it all, because your tires is what determines your cornering capabilities and how fast the car can stop. There's a common misconception that upgrading your brake rotors and your pads is what's going to help you decrease the stopping distance of your car. But really all of that does is help you be able to prevent brake fade and withstand the higher temperatures that you see for track use. The real determining factor in how quickly you can stop your car is your tires. Pretty much every single car nowadays is equipped with something called an anti-lock braking system or ABS. Basically what that does is it prevents the wheels from becoming completely locked and then allowing the tires to just slide because the tires are actually the bottleneck in how fast the car can stop. 
So choosing a proper set of tires is what's really gonna benefit you most when you take it out onto the track. And then your brake pads and your rotors are what's gonna determine how well they can hold up in long endurance racing under heavy braking. Anyways guys, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, give it the thumbs up. You can even subscribe to my channel for more informative videos that I'll have coming up in the future. Thank you guys for watching and I will see y'all in the next video. Later.